Uh, all right. So I did go ahead and put a day here on our blog. Hopefully that file, is that file there to download yet? Oh, whew, I just barely put it there. Um, so here's the idea. So what we're doing today is we are going to, we're, we're not doing VBA at all. We're going to be using Office Script. Now, Office Script has been available for a little while, maybe a couple of years in the online version of Excel. But I'm pretty sure like since the beginning of this semester, it came into the desktop version of Excel. So what Office Script is, it is Microsoft's new way of automating Excel. So you know, VBA is pretty long in the tooth. There are security issues. And I think the big, the, the big concern with uh, VBA for them is that you know, having, getting VBA working on the Windows version of Excel was a breeze because they took Visual Basic and they just imported it in. Getting it to run on the Mac operating system was a nightmare and it's still not a really smooth experience. Faced with the question of being able to get VBA to work on the online version, the Android version, the iOS version, like the thought of trying to redo VBA for automation in all those environments, they're like, there's, there's just like, there's no way we're going to do this. And so they said, well, good news. There's already a language that is cross-platform compatible, and that's JavaScript. And so beginning in um, actually 2013 was when they first really started moving in this direction. 2013 is when they made the new add-in architecture that lets you develop add-ins using JavaScript instead of um, VBA or other environments that you could do it in. Uh, and then just recently, as in this year, um, they've got Office Script ready for like end users to do automation using JavaScript in the desktop platform of Excel. And so uh, this is really pretty exciting uh, to me. I thought I was gonna be showing you about doing some automation in Excel with Power Automate, but Office Script is much more relevant to uh, what we're doing in this class and probably, well, at least for spreadsheet automation for sure, because it's really limited in what you can do. And what we're gonna show you today is really powerful. So my plan is to take the same census example that we did. You remember that one where we had the census data and we made it so we could bring them in and we could compare different uh, counties next to each other and build charts. I wanna redo that exercise, but to do it today using Office Script. So let's see how we do it. Hopefully Office Script shows up for you. I'm gonna go ahead and open up um, that file that we started with. Uh, census data.xls. X. That's the point we're going to realize here. This is not an XLSM file. It's an XLSX file. And I, I, I've left us, I'll start a little bit. So we already have the compare sheet built. We already have uh, the drop down for selecting counties. So that's, that's built. That wasn't any VBA. That was just getting that sheet organized for us to work with. But now I want to make it so that uh, make a script, an office script, so that when we you know, select one here, we can run the script and it will bring in the data. And hopefully we'll get to making the charts as well. So tell me, do you have an automate tab now on your ribbon? Ra raise your hand if you say, yes, it's there. Raise your hand if you're saying, no, I don't have it. Uh, okay, so. Question is, what version of Excel? If you don't have it, is it do you is it like a, a version, like an installed version? Like is it your com, uh, like an office or your work computer or anything? So my guess is it just needs to be updated. Now you might be able to do everything that we're doing here in the online version. So if you go to just like uh, uh, I don't know how to get there. If you search for Excel online in Google, it'll find it. It's really funny. One day I was using Bing for whatever reason. I had, Chrome, uh, uh, what's the uh, browser from Microsoft? Edge. I had Edge up for whatever reason, and I searched for Excel online, which I've done you know dozens of times through Chrome to find it. It comes up as the first choice. And Bing couldn't find Excel online. It was like, really? That's really amazing. So uh, yeah, if you don't have it showing there, this might work in Excel online today. I haven't tried it out. Okay, so. Uh, this is our environment. We've got, uh, we, we can make a script and let's, let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on new script. Using multiple panes, additional panes will open as tabs, saving space for your content. 
I don't have office. I don't have access. Uh, that's no good. Maybe I have to log in here. It's trying to make me log in. Check for my duo push. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the truth is I'm shocked that I can do this on the podium computer. I was planning to have to do this on my laptop today, so I hope this does work. Just a moment. I'm gonna to try to open that again. Your organization having may have turned this feature off or you may not meet the requirements. Requirements. How rude they put the tab there, but didn't actually make it work. Okay. So um, I'm trying to think if I should do this in the online version or if I should do it on my laptop. Let me try the online version first. Um, for those of you that um, did you actually open did the script actually open for you? Yeah. yeah. I think it's just this is a um, I think yeah, as I said, I was shocked that the tab was there and I thought that meant we could we could do it. So let me go here and hopefully this will work out okay. So online, visit website. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, I'm gonna need to get that file up here. I'm not quite sure how to do that. Hmm. We just have to get it to, yeah. Um, I have the Omni tab, but it won't let me run off the script because I don't have it as a group or school account. So you know what I can do about that? I do have Office 365 for BYU, but I don't know how to change the way it to be a student account. So, so my guess is the question is, hey, I'm not getting access there. I think what you'll have to do is you'll have to log in to Excel using your BYU account. So if you look right up here in the upper right-hand corner, it should show who you're authenticated with in Office. And hopefully... If you sign in using your BYU account here, that'll give it to you. Although this is all kind of cutting edge for me, so I'm not, I'm not sure. All right, who can help me like upload a file to here? Upload, there we go. Census data to XLSX, uploading your file. Oh, uploaded it and brought it in. And I've got an automate tab here. All right. Well, I didn't practice this in the online version. Here's hoping that it works. My experience with doing, with doing add-in development on the online version is that it's rock solid. And so I'm hopeful this is gonna work really well. So I think I can change my ribbon to look a little more like your ribbon. Oh, there we go. Okay, so new script. Uh, here we have here we have a script. I think I can zoom in. Plus. Okay, so that's not going to be the biggest code experience here that we're working on, but hopefully we'll be able to get it to go. So the first thing that we're going to see in this script is that this is going to look a little bit different. So, so you're used to thinking in, in VBA, thinking in terms of some things being a sub-procedure or a function procedure. In JavaScript, everything is a function. And so function is just the word that we use. Um, and you don't have to send a value back from a function. Like you do in VBA, always a value comes back, but you can. So, so function, and then we get the name of the function. This name here is a special name. So main is the name of the function that will get run when you click run. We can create other functions and we can have our main function call those other functions here in this. You might even think of this script as a module. You could think of it that same way and that would be pretty healthy. And it is passing in a reference to the workbook that we're working on. And so this is the object that's gonna give us the ability to interact with our workbook over here. And then we'll just write code here, but we'll write this code in JavaScript. So, why don't, we, why don't we call this one? I'm gonna go ahead and name this. Right now it's called script three, and I'm gonna name this um, 
I'm going to call it county data. And so this is going to be the one that we're building to actually bring in the county data to like, like populate the data right here. So rather than just try to start typing this, let's go ahead and record ourselves. So I'm going to leave this right here and I'm going to come to record actions. Now, is there, before we move on here, is there anyone who's going, I'm not quite, I'd really love to follow along, but I'm not quite there yet. Let's come take a look. So we can come in here and make, go ahead and put it back down there. Click here and let's make sure you're logged in. Through BYU account. All right, let's go try it on Office Online. So go to Google and search for Excel Online. The website. And upload. And upload the file. Hopefully that's going to work. If not, I don't have anything else to help you with. Anyone else? Okay, so we're going to start off with something simple. We're just going to record ourselves typing a value into a cell. So I'm going to come over to record actions. Now, you'll notice that what it's done here is it's replaced our code edit over here with the recorder, but it now have, we now have a tab. Oops, we have a tab, we have tabs over here. So here's our code editor, and then here's our record macro. So when it tells us right now it's recording, that's great. I'm just gonna like select C1 and type in hello world. Hey, so it has recorded that macro. And you'll, you'll notice that we can, we can stop the recorder here. Probably should stop the recorder here. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what the best workflow is for working with recording little snippets of code. There was a button there that would let us copy that, what we just did as code, um, which is what I wanted to do, but I was afraid it was gonna kind of keep recording while we were doing other things. So I went ahead and stopped it. We now have a, this script here called script three. I'm gonna edit that and we will now see what we just recorded. So I'm gonna copy these two lines that are inside, well, comment, it brought a comment as well. And I'm gonna bring them over to the code that I'm working on. So here in my code editor, I'm gonna go back and find, go back to all scripts. I'm gonna find my county data one that I'm working on. And I will edit that, and I'm just gonna paste that code in here. I thought I copied it. Grip three, edit. Copy. No, I think I ran it, I don't wanna run it. I done. Oh no. Ah, uh, do you think it made a tab? Oh, wonderful. Thank you. All right, I want to. I want to go to this one and edit this and paste. Did that paste for you? Okay, good. Okay, so let's just look at what this is doing. This is saying. Um, here's the workbook object that was passed in, and we're going to call a method of that object 
called get active worksheet. And we're going to put that onto a variable. Now, we in JavaScript, there's a couple of different ways that we can declare a variable. Let is one of them. Just says we're going to make a variable here. When you make a variable with let, it's a regular old variable. You can change it. I don't expect to ever bind this variable onto a different worksheet. And so I'm going to change this from let to const. So const is like a constant in VBA as well, um, except that we're allowed to run code to assign a value to it. So we get this one line, we can run whatever we want, whatever code we want on this statement. It will assign the results of that to this variable. In, fact, in JavaScript, it's referred to as a constant variable. So it gets its value, but once it's set, you can't change it. You try to say, change it, it'll tell you, hey, you're doing something fishy, changing something that shouldn't be changed. Now, what I'd like to do is instead of getting the active worksheet, I'm going to get this worksheet by its name. So I'm going to say get worksheet. And I'm going to put that as my compare worksheet. So this is the name of the whatever appears on the tab. And instead of calling it a selected sheet, I'm going to call it compare. So now I have a variable called compare. Const compare equals, and it's going to be referring to that, that worksheet. So instead of selected worksheet here, that'll be compare. And we're saying go to a particular cell and setting the value to hello world. I'll change that to hello globe. And then I'll just click on the run button and we should see that now just change the code to hello globe. Anyone saying this is not working for me? Okay. So we have now a reference to our compare sheet. Now, what we want to do is we want to be able to take the value that's right here in A1, and we need to go look that up on the county name sheet and find what row it's on, um, because that's where we're going to get the name of the state and the name of the county to be able to put in rows one and two as the header for this column of data. So let's just, let me read that into a variable. So let me come here and make another uh, constant variable. In other words, once I set the variable, I'm not going to change its value. So I'll prefer const over let. Uh, and let me just call this um, county. I'll call it selected county. And that's going to equal my compare sheet. And now I want to read a value off of that A1. So compare is the name of my sheet. And then we have a method called get range. And there's, and I'm going to use like, like, like A1 notation for this. And in fact, it actually is A1. So A1. And so this is a ref, this will be a reference to the range object. I want the value property from that, um, but it's not just dot value. There's a method called get value that will return the value from that cell. And so that should, that should now have read the value from A1 into this variable. There's no debug.print here. Instead, it's console.log. And if you're from JavaScript anywhere else, you're going, oh, good, console.log. That's the way everyone puts output in, um, like debugging output in JavaScript. The method, I'm going to put parentheses around it. And then I'm just going to make a string here to show that. So I want to say selected county in quotes and maybe put an equal sign and then concatenate onto that. I do string concatenation with the plus sign rather than the ampersand sign. And then I'll put the name of the variable. So I've got a string that shows the name of the variable. I want that to print out with the actual name, the value that's actually in that variable. So 
when I run this, I should see it's have it say Gov Kansas in my little in my in my console. So I'm just going to save this. You don't have to save it to run it, but I'm kind of working in an environment I'm not that familiar with. I don't know if I'm going to accidentally do something that kind of closes this. So I want to make sure I have it saved. And I'll run it. And there we go. So now it is showing me down here that you know here's the output from what we just printed. Okay. So syntax is quite a bit different, but let's go ahead and kind of work on with the example. Uh, oh, here's one thing is that when you record code, it's gonna put a semicolon at the end of each statement. It used to be that in JavaScript, you had to put a semicolon at the end of each statement, but now the JavaScript interpreters are like, you know what, we can figure out where the end of your statement is. So no, no semicolon needed. So I prefer not to put the semicolon in just because it makes the code simpler. Uh, if you've got a lot of experience with JavaScript and you look at that without semicolons and you feel really uncomfortable, feel free to put them in, um, but they're not required. All right, so there's a couple other sheets that we're gonna, we're gonna need references to. So we're gonna have to come to our county names sheet and we've gotta do a search to find where that value is on this. So we're gonna have to have a reference to county names and We've got our data set sheet, which has the raw data we're trying to pull over. And so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and build sheets to get them connect sheet variables to get them connected to those as well. So I'm just going to copy that first statement and we're going to get all three of these sheets bound in. So one is called county names. And that'll be the county name sheet. And then one is called data set. You're used to working in VBA where you can type the case, you can type your keywords in whichever case you want, and the VBA editor will put the case to the case that's the normal case for that. In JavaScript, you don't get that luxury. It's going to accept whatever you type as the way you meant to type it, and case matters. And so the names of methods and objects are all going to be case sensitive. The O U C O U and T Y names. That's the only place I got it wrong. Okay. Ah. Oh. Okay, so we have a selected county is you know, so far what we're after. So now let's go ahead and come over here to our county names sheet. And remember that we're gonna search for that selected county in column D. So let's go ahead and do that search. I'm gonna put a comment in here that says we're searching, searching for the county. for the county in county names. Okay, so I'm gonna make a, another constant variable here called found cell. And I'm gonna set that equal to, now here we're gonna to want to do a search, yeah. So we're gonna search on our county name sheet. We've got the county names variable here. And now we're gonna to wanna to get a particular range. I wanna look right here only in column D. So get range. And I will just say D colon D. That will be, I'm now referring to that particular range, column D. And now I wanna do the find method here. So dot find. And then I've got two arguments here. The first one is what I'm looking for, and that's my selected county variable. And then the second one is like search criterion. This is gonna come in as an object. 
So we're going to do this in curly braces. So the idea here is that we can put multiple things here. It's not just a single value, but we can like send in kind of a whole package. And there are lots of settings that we can set. Now you may remember working with find in VBA, there's a list of, of um, possible arguments that you can put for that as long as you're armed, because it's whether you're searching in the formula or you're searching in the value, are you searching case sensitive, are you, you know, starting one place? And each one of those in VBA becomes its own parameter. And this is characteristic of JavaScript as well, as we'll say, listen, if you've got a bunch of parameters like that, that's just gonna be one argument and you will send an object that defines all of those in it. And so inside these, these parentheses, we're actually gonna give note or these curly braces, we're gonna give um, like potentially several items. I'm only gonna use one here, complete match, colon, true. I'm gonna to try to make this a little bit bigger. So this is the second argument. And if I knew like the syntax for the other ones, we could put a comma in here and say match case. Match case is false, right? So that's the way these objects work in JavaScript. I'm not sure that it's expecting something called match case. So I'm gonna leave that out just to make sure this example works the way I know that I've, that I've practiced it. So that should give us now found cell should be bound on to the range that it found. So let me just do a console.log here to make sure that we're working to this point. And I'll just do the address of the found cell. I'm a little worried about this highlighting here, but I think we're okay. Found cell dot get address. I'll run that and see if it works. Yeah, so so our, like the editor here is looking at that thinking, I think there's a problem with that, but it looks like it's executing just fine because it has found this on column D row 936. Now, that row number is gonna be important to me because I'm gonna use the row number to be able to pull in the name of the county, the name of the state, and I'm gonna use that row number to know which row the data are on in my data set because they're in the same order here as they are here, right? Remember the difference is there's no header line here, so we'll have to do a little offset here, but let's keep track of the row where we found that now. So let me just go ahead and call that row num. So another constant. Row num equals found cell. Now there's a method called get row index. You remember that when we work with arrays in VBA, they start counting at zero. In Office Script, we start counting at zero as well. And so when I ask for the row that we found this on, if we look for that here, let me go ahead and find it over here. Ooh, range, go to, wanted find. There we go. Okay, so this is on row number 936, but when we count to that row from inside of Office Script, it's going to start counting at zero. So this should actually be row number 935 is what this tells us what the row index is for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and print that one as well, console.log. My row number. Your brand with errors cannot infer the data type for this variable. Found cell 
F O U, thank you, found, F O U N D, and then an underscore. Yeah, so my row number is 935. And it's because it just starts counting at zero here. Someone made that decision. I'm guessing they had a good reason for making that decision. It seems like a really crazy decision at this point in my life, but that's just something we have to deal with here. All right, so we've got, we've got that. So our next step, let's go ahead and pull over. We're gonna use that number to pull over our state and we're gonna put it in cell B1. And then we'll put the county name in B2. So right in the state and city, the state and county. Okay, so that's on our compare sheet. So I've got a, I've got a variable referring to that worksheet. Compare dot get range. Now, for this one, uh, oh, get range will be fine because that's going to go right into B1. It's going to be the name of the state. Now, it's like there are, I'm trying to think if there are any properties that are just exposed to us as properties in Office Script. Now, in the very, very similar language that we use for writing add-ins, there are, but I'm not sure I've ever seen just like a bare exposed property in Office Script. We may only interact with those properties through methods. I'm not positive about that, but that's the case here. So instead of just like saying dot value equals something, there's a method that's used to set that property and it's called set value. And then we pass as an argument the value that we want to put in there. And the value that we want to put in there right now, oh, yeah, we did that. We already did that once up here, didn't we? I think we must we must have done that in our practice. Okay, so we're going to set the value, and I'm just going to now read the value off of our county names sheet. So county names dot that's the sheet get range. Now get range takes an address like A1, like A1 notation. But I'd rather use numeric indexes to get at this, but I'm, the value that I'm trying to read. And so I'm going to use get range, get range by indexes. And I'm going to give it four numbers, starting row, starting column, number of rows, and number of columns. So my starting row is the row number that we calculated. So row num. My starting column is 0, 1, 2, because we count starting with 0, 0, 1, 2. Oops. So column 2, and we're going to take one row and one column. This part is going to refer to that cell, and I want to get the value from that cell. So I'll call the get value method. So I'll run that, make sure that it works. Check on my compare sheet, and it should have put a county name or a state name right there in B1. Should be a pretty simple extension to be able to put the county name in because the county name is just one column before in the data. So B2 is going to be the same row number, column number one, taking one and so forth. I'm gonna shrink this down just a bit. I'll run that and we should now get the state and the county name brought in. Ooh. Show me how comfortable you are with what we're doing so far. Zero to five. Five, four, four, three, 
three, four, five. Okay. It's a different syntax, um, but the object structure is going to feel familiar to you. All right. Next one is going to be pretty complex because we got to do the copy transpose to do this one. So I think I want to record myself giving that one a shot. So uh, we'll probably have to modify it after we record it, but let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come back to my recorder, record actions, or recording, super. I'm going to come to my data set, and I'm just going to go ahead and select, you come over to column A. I don't really care which column it is. I'm just going to get which row of data. I got to get some row of data. So I'll select here some row in column A. Do a control shift right arrow to select that data. Copy that. Come back to compare. Select B3, and I'll do a paste special transpose. Okay, so I've just recorded myself doing that. Oh. Let's cross our fingers that we've got something readable that got recorded. So I'll stop the recorder and we'll go take a look at that code. Well, good news, it's not a whole lot of code. Let's see if it makes sense. So we're getting to a worksheet. Data set is, oh, this is another worksheet that we have here. And then it looks like this is the one operative, one operative statement. Let's go ahead and copy that, and we will bring it over into our other script. So I've got to go back to the script that I'm working on, county data, edit that one, and let me just bring that line in here to work on it. So the selected sheet is where I'm writing to, so that's my, that's in my code is called compare. We're looking at B3 and we're gonna copy from something else. And then inside those parentheses, oops, let's see. Right here, we're saying, what are we copying from? I have no idea what the true and the false means. Copy range all. That must, one of those must be for transpose. Yeah, so let's do the source range, copy type. Yeah, so transpose is here. Anyway, hopefully that's gonna work for us. So right now we're hard coded to A11 to CE11. I'm okay with that at the moment. Cell script range type all, false true. Let's just see if that does it. I'm gonna clear out column B least part of it. And I'll run this again and see what that does. Okay, looks pretty good. Now, of course, we're going to have to code this to actually, you know, get the row that we're after. And there's a couple of ways that we could do it. One would be to uh, use get range by, ind by indexes because then we could kind of put these numbers in. Um, but let's try this because the row that we're after is just gonna be our row number plus one. Yeah, because the data here actually has a header row on it. So I'm just gonna show you kind of a really common way of doing like string replacement in JavaScript. One of the things that's will be a little bit different to you is that there are three different characters that you can use to mark a string in JavaScript. You can use double quotes, you can use single quotes to mark a string, which is nice because you've got a single, you've got a, a string that needs double quotes in it. You can just mark it with single quotes, but you can also use the back tick, which is underneath the tilde key over by the one on your keyboard. And that's what I'm going to use. So instead of having double quotes around this, I'm going to put a back tick around that. The back tick gives you some extra neat kind of functionality. And that is where I have this 11. I'm going to get rid of the 11 and I'm going to replace it with a dollar sign and then an opening and closing brace. That is like a special 
character sequence that says, oh, you're trying to inject some other expression into this string. Yeah, I am, row num plus one. So inside those braces, I will put row num plus one. And that now will just actually evaluate row num plus one and put it in place of this in that string. Same thing for my other 11, I will do that here as well. So in VBA, we'd have to say, start this string, end the string, concatenate onto it something else, start the string up again. Here we can say this is one long string and we can use this special sequence character of dollars and, and curly braces to inject values in. So now if that works, we should actually get the values from Gov County brought in here. So let's just, we'll, we'll believe that it's working as long as it's changing the values. So instead of 10, 15, we should get a different value in there. Yeah, so now it's brought in a different value. Nice. So different notation, but still work, work it up step by step. Now, it would be good if before we did this, we push the data over, right? So we're going to insert a new column here on B, and then as we run this, we'll be able to get multiple values. So let's just go ahead and do an insert. And I copied myself doing an insert earlier, and it seems like it was, uh, yeah, it's a little, it's, it's a little involved. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and record myself doing the insert again. So back over to my recorder record actions. I'm going to select all of column B and do an insert. I'm going to go ahead and click the copy as code button there. And I'm just wondering what happens if I leave my macro recorder running. I don't know. I'm going to come back to my other code editor while it's still there and just paste that value in and see what we get. So yeah, so here is the line that's doing the inserting. It's telling it to shift to the right. My guess is we could have left that argument out. It would still work. It's made a, it's made a, a variable, a, a um, sheet variable, which of course I don't need. And I will bring in my compare sheet for that one. It's kind of nice that it does a pretty good little comment here, insert at range BB on selected sheet and move existing cells to the right. Okay, so I'll run my script. Oh, it says my macro recorder is still recording. I'm gonna have to stop it. Uh, there's got to be a better way to get back to the script editor that I'm working on, but I don't know what it is. I'll come back to my county data and edit. And I'll run it again. Looks like it did the trick, just like when we first did this in VBA. It's taking the width of the column to the left of it. So after we put the data in, let's go ahead and do an auto fit. So I'm going to go ahead and take my reference to that whole column B. But after we've put the data in, I'm just going to do auto fit here. Oh, but it's actually that column B dot get format. And then auto fit columns. That's looking pretty good. We have to get rid of the conditional formatting. Just for when it makes a new call that inserts it, it's also going to have the You mean, like you mean the drop down? The drop down? Um, oh, interesting. I didn't notice that when I was working through this example before. 
So we probably should. Um, did it do that? Did it do that on our other example in VBA? I don't remember. But let's it's kind of push through. I think it's okay to have it's not the end of the world that that's there, the the uh, data validation. Let's leave that there and um, if we have time, we'll come back and take a look at that. So um, so far, so good. By the way, let me just kind of show you how you find help on this stuff. Let me come, oh, I've got my editor open here. So I'm just gonna search for um, Office Script. Uh, and then I'm just gonna look, like, look for something like the range class. And that should get me yeah, Office Script range interface, uh, ah, range class. This looks good. This should take me to. Now I think this is this this. There'd be a huge amount of overlap, but this is the. I don't think this is Office Script. Yeah, this is the Excel JavaScript API. Can I go to Office Script from here? Office Script reference. Office Script API reference. That's what we get. So there's a good search. Office Script reference should bring it up. And then under Excel Script, we should, like, these are the objects that you can manipulate. So let me come to, like, the workbook, and this should show us all the methods of the workbook. Yeah, so they don't list, they don't list any properties up here. They go straight to methods. So it may be that there are no bare properties that we have access to. So you've got then what the different methods are. Sometimes they have an example that's helpful, but a lot of times it's just, you know, here's a definition of what this is. So here's an example of this one being used. What is it? Get worksheet key. Here's an example. Now, as yet, there is no way in Office Script to make this happen automatically in response to this cell changing. So kind of the closest thing we can do at this point is we can, we come back to script details. Uh, maybe I can do it from edit. I'm gonna click on the more options here and add a button. So there's this thing called add button here, which will put a button on my worksheet that will invoke that code. So let me right click that so that I can move it somewhere else. Let's kind of put it right here. Now, VBA, when you write in VBA, it stores the code in your workbook. When you write in Office Script, it stores it in OneDrive. Like the script is totally separate from this workbook. And so when you come to the Automate tab, you see all the scripts that you have written. So you can like write your script there, like in your, in your desktop version, you can go to online and all of your scripts are showing there online. So they're, they're in the web, which means you're gonna notice how long it takes to do this. Let me go ahead and close my script editor. I'm going to, let's see, we've got code. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these, I guess. I wanna see how long it takes for that to run. So we'll run this, preparing to run, running. So it took a while because step one is it had to go and pull that script down from the web so that it could run it. Whereas when we're working in our development environment, it just says, yeah, we've got this code right here, we'll run it. So that's one thing that's also kind of a little bit different. All right, let's go ahead and do our second part of this example which was actually building a chart. So let's give that one a shot as well. So we're gonna make another script for that. So I'll go ahead and click on my new script again here. Instead of script six, I'm gonna call this make chart. Make a chart.
and we're ready to go. In fact, I'm gonna need a reference to uh, my compare sheet for this one as well. So let me go ahead and go just copy that for my last example. So back to all scripts. Let me go find my county data, edit this one. I'm gonna start off with this reference to a worksheet. Ah, uh, make a chart, edit. Now you'll remember that the way we decide which chart we're gonna make is by selecting the row that has the data that we're trying to chart. We'll go ahead and get a couple more of these out here. So I need to start by saying, let's keep track of which row we're trying to manipulate. And so let's create a variable called row. And we're gonna set that equal to the selected, the, like the row index of the selected range. So there's only one active cell in the whole workbook. And so asking which cell is active or the selection is not a method of the worksheet, but of the workbook itself. So we're gonna say row is equal to whatever workbook was passed into this script. And we're gonna use the method that is called get selected range. And then we're gonna ask for the row for the index of that row. Get row index. So that will be the row number that we're after. Now we want to make a sheet. So maybe we should record our, uh, make a chart. Maybe we should record ourselves making a chart. I'm gonna go ahead and do it the same way we did before. I'm gonna select the data, do a control click and then select the heading that I want. And I'll record myself building that chart. Back to my recorder, record an action, insert 2D column chart. It's a very nice column chart for me. Stop recording. I'll copy that code. This action currently can't be recorded. Those of you who work on the desktop, did it record anything? Is anyone actually doing that still or just watching? And so you recorded it, did it record something? Yeah, okay, so that's what happened when I, when I worked this before on my desktop machine. It was like, listen, you're trying to do something with a discontiguous range and that's hard. We haven't figured that out yet in this environment. And so it gave you some code that's headed you in the right direction, but it's not what you need. So uh, I was hoping to get some of that so we don't have to type from scratch, but let's go ahead and, and type in what we need for this. So I'm gonna come back to my make a chart. I'm gonna delete this chart. And we'll go ahead and uh, build the chart. So const tht is equal to, and now we will uh, do call the add chart method on this sheet. So my sheet variable is called compare, add chart. So now it's expecting uh, one of these chart types. Wait, I wonder if I can click that and get to it. So the reference to the chart type is kind of long. Excel script. Excel script 
dot chart type. And Excel script chart type dot column clustered. And then here we want to give it uh, a range that has the data that we want to chart. Oof. So let's go ahead and I'm going to kind of pause on this and let's go ahead and get our range built first. So let me make another constant called data range. And I'm going to set my data range to be like the range that holds the actual data, not the labels, but holds the data. So compare dot get range by indexes. Because I'm going to need to know, I'm going to have to calculate which column eventually I'm after. But let's go ahead and hard code it for now. Get range by indexes, row number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's just Oh, row number is row. We already have that variable created. So row number, row. Column number zero, one is my starting spot. I want one row and I want three columns. Now, that's that three columns I'm going to need to actually calculate. But let's just go ahead and get, get it at least building a chart and then we'll build it out to be more flexible. So now that's the, the range that I'm trying to build, that I'm trying to chart. So I'm gonna plug that as my second argument here. So that says, great, I'm making a chart. I'm adding a chart to the sheet. It's gonna be a clustered column chart, charting that data. I'll go ahead and run this and hopefully that'll bring a chart on that looks like something. There we go. The fact that it has colors and it didn't have colors for me earlier today makes me a little bit worried. Yours doesn't have colors? Anyone else who's on the desktop version have colors? Anyone else on the desktop version have a chart? Bars, but no colors? Oh, say there's no, oh, there's no bars. Yeah, it's probably just making sure that you're, it would depend on where your active cell is. So make sure your active cell is on a row with some data. Does it have colors on your bars or not? Yeah, so the fact that it's a little bit different here it has me a little bit troubled because I think this is a difference in, in how it's executing on the online version. But we'll, we'll press forward and, and um, just see how it goes. Okay, so we've got to calculate what our last column is so that we can plug that in, says something that we're reading off the sheet instead. So I think we'll go ahead and type this rather than try to record it. So let me go ahead and make another constant here called last call. And that's gonna be our compare sheet. We're gonna start in, in cell A1. Get range, A1, and we're just going to do like an Excel end to right. So from here, we're going to say get range edge. So like, this is the method that moves us, you know, to the right. And then we're after the, the direction to the right. So how do we do that? Like in VBA, it would have been Excel to right. And here it's Excel script, keyboard direction, right. Excel script dot keyboard direction dot right. That then will get us to that particular cell. And what I really want is the column index of that cell. So dot column index. And that should, I'm sorry, dot get column index.
So I should be able to now, and so that should give me, that should give me the three, zero, one, two, three. So that's what I want to put in there, uh, last call. A little bit, a little bit strange because I'm really saying how many columns do I want to bring back? And my last call happens to be three, but only because I don't care about the first column. So anyway, that's, it happens to give me the right value this way. So that should generate a chart. I'll make sure that I'm actually on a row that has data. So we're getting that chart. Okay. Let's go ahead and position this chart before we try to, because um, the position of the chart is going to give us the ability to look at an if, what an if statement looks like in this environment. So um, let's go ahead and set the left property of this chart. So CHT dot set left. And so we can set the left to, let's just go ahead and I'm just gonna set it to a hard value. Um, we can read, we can do the same thing we did before, figure out where this cell is, read where the left of this cell is and use that as the basis. But let's just try to set this to like 300, see where it is and we can adjust it from there. Delete that, I'll run my code. Looks like we were pretty close. I'm gonna try like 380. Three eighty looks pretty good. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to adjust this so that I can either put the top at the top of my screen or below the last created chart. So let me go ahead and create a margin variable. So margin equals 10. And then I'm going to make a variable called top that I'm going to default to 10, but then I'm going to change it if necessary. So far, all of our variables have been things that we would set and then never change. So, so the constant keyword is the right one to use. In this case, I'm going to say let top, so we're making a variable with a different keyword to define it, let top equal margin. And now I'm going to check to see, and that's where I want it to be if there's no charts already. But if I already have charts, I would like to be able to, to make that you know, different. So let's put an if statement in here. So if, same keyword to start it, if, but then I have parentheses that I put the condition inside of. So in VBA, the condition goes between the if and the then. There's no then here. Say if, and then parentheses go for the condition. And then I use braces to say, I've got multiple lines that I want to execute conditionally. And so that's like the, the raw syntax. So let's go ahead and you know, ask how many charts we have. So there's a method called get charts, which gets the collection of the charts off of a given sheet. So if, and probably let's go ahead and put that into a variable first. So let me come here and say const charts equals compare dot get charts. That will give me an array of all the charts that are on that sheet. I'm now going to ask how many there are. If charts dot length is greater than we will have already created this one. So if it's greater than one, it will be equal to one the first time that we've done it. So if it's greater than one, there's already a chart on the sheet before we made this one. So in that case, what I want to do is I want to change my top variable. So now top 
is going to be the top of my second most recently created chart. So ch uh, charts. Now, in VBA, when I refer to an array, I use parentheses to say the index of the array. In JavaScript, I use square brackets. So I want not the most recently added chart because that's the one that I just put on. I want the one added before it. So charts.length. If I've got three charts, charts.length is going to be three. They will be numbered zero, one, and two. So I want charts.length minus one would get me to the last chart created, but that's the one I just barely added. So I want minus two here to tell me that's going to be like this like the, the chart that was added, not most recently, but the one before. And from there, I want to ask for the top of that chart. That'll give me the top of it. And I want to add on to that same expression, but instead of get top, get height. And I will add on to that margin. So that should say match the Height of the other, of the one added before this one. Match the top plus the add the height plus a little margin should give us some space. So that has set my top variable. I'm now ready to set my chart. Ch, what did I call it? Cht. Dot set top. And then we'll just pass in the top variable there. Okay, so hopefully now if I add, if I add a chart. Okay, so the first time through I put that chart based on the margin, I'll add another chart. And the second time through now it's put it down side by side. I guess the one last thing I'd like to do here is make it so that we increment down to pick up the next, uh, like activate the next cell. So that if I run it multiple times, it'll create different charts. And I thought I did that in my example here. I'm not seeing it, so I'm just going to have to see if I can remember how to do it. So I'm going to refer to something on my compare sheet. So compare dot get range by indexes. The row that I want is my current row plus one. The column that I want is column number zero, the first column, one row and one column. That will refer to that, and now I have to select it. Or maybe it's just select. Okay, so I'm on line six. I'll run this. It makes a chart, and it moved me to seven. So now we're making different charts. Be a little bit more involved. We could um, go ahead and bring in the chart title. Um, this be similar to how we did it in VBA, but just different notation to get there, and actually put the states as the series values here. Um, but we've got three minutes to go in class, and this has been like introduction to doing this in JavaScript. Any questions? So it's a different language. Um, interesting thing is that the code's not built into the workbook. So when you move workbooks around, the code doesn't go with it. Uh, how do you get that script available to someone else to run? I don't know, but there's I've seen somewhere where it said share. There's a share. I don't know. How, I don't know what happens if I click that button. Those in Brigham Young University who have access to this workbook will be able to view and run the script.
So they've taken a very different approach to how this code gets distributed and um, how you're gonna be able to access it. Um, just a reminder that we've got to get your correct student ID put into my educator. So if you don't have scores coming into Learning Suite already, it means you don't have your correct um, net ID uh, plugged into my educator. So reach out to the TAs if you need help getting that set up. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. They will run it uh, tomorrow. So the last project is due tonight. We'll run it tomorrow and you can make sure that you're, that you're in good shape. Um, yeah, so good luck on the exam. Don't despair if you don't do as well as you hope on the exam because there's always a little bit of movement. Historically, there's been a chance for me to be able to, if you're close to a grade, to be able to move you up a little bit. So if you find yourself right on the margin, just below the margin, probably gonna be able to get that next grade. And uh, that's great, it's been a good semester. Thanks for participating with me. Class dismissed. <laughs>